Hello Targar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Dynamic Effort Bench Press Day. A uh, quick reminder for those of you who enjoy these videos every day, please click like down below. Help me keep the likes higher than the dislikes and please like the other video that I uploaded today. So I went back to what I said I was going to do. We're going to do the more traditional waves I've done on all my speed work because I made good progress doing a lot of that. I've hit my best PRs. I've had to go back and look at where I got my best PRs, and, and I've, as I said the other day, the most advanced version of speed work that Westside runs, I am probably not an elite enough lifter to really get the most out of it. I'm just not. So some of the little more traditional stuff seems to work better for me still at this point, meaning 25% chain and band and alternating chains and bands in different ways. So I'm going to go back to those. So today was 50% max plus 25% band tension. Now I took about 10 pounds off my max because my strength has regressed a little with the shoulder inflammation but my shoulder felt great through all the working out there's a little bit of tingling still in there but fortunately for me there's no real pain um, I have range of motion back to my shoulder so all of this felt really really good felt really good now for those who are like well there's a little bit of chain on the bottom I know which is why I went a little over on my chains Technically, I put six pounds more chains on the bar than what I should have. Uh, so that should make up for that. That should make up for that. So and I'll probably do uh, 50, 55, 60% for these waves. And I did 10 triples today. And probably next time I'll go down to nine and then eight uh, to, again, account for the increased weight. So we'll increase the weight slightly and cut a set out each time. And that should be good. Um, but the speed was good today. Like these felt good. The speed was good. I took off the wraps. It's like I don't need wrist wraps for this, particularly with this bar. Might as well just toughen my wrists up because I can hold it in position and save it for the heavier work. Like even, even my rep work on the floor press, I kind of need them. And again, these went good. And yeah, I do all of mine close grip. And some people say, why don't you do the, the rotating grip whisk? I will if I can get stronger on a wide grip. And I think the floor pressing and dips will help with that because my chest just isn't always strong at the bottom with the wider grip. And it's always been uncomfortable for me. It's always been uncomfortable for me. But I know my chest strength has regressed a little bit with the shoulder. I know it has, and so is my tricep. So we're, we're going to keep hammering everything. And I know maybe the tricep has, and it just feels like it because all the other movements uh, that use the chest and the delts with the triceps seem to have gotten weaker. My triceps have probably maintained strength because I've done so much tricep work. And I think like when we've watched me do extensions and things, uh, I, I haven't really lost any performance at all. But on the bigger movements I have. So we'll get it right back to where it was. And I feel like if I do all this stuff right, I can push back to work that last big PR I hit with the 352 close grip and push beyond it. And I think if I go ahead and I build my pecs up more also, along with my tricep focus, because I know my triceps are my weak link on all my close grip pressing at least. And even on wider grip, um, I've tended to miss lockouts. I'm just slower and weaker out of the bottom, and I just can't get as much weight moving in general. But I, I need to build it up, and so I'm going to go back over to floor pressing, and here's the thing. The last phase before I hit that big PR I was up to where I could do like 230 for 10 on my floor pressing with a wide grip, right? With a couple different bars, more or less, if I recall. So that's where I need to get back to and then push beyond, right? Even the wider grip floor pressing carried over really, really well to even my close grip max. Now, people say, well, why don't you close grip floor press? Uh, mainly only because I've noticed that the guys over at Westside said that they notice it doesn't increase their bench. Like, it just doesn't seem to work. It should, but it doesn't for them. And maybe it's because the floor press already kind of changes our biomechanics and range of motion, and we lose a lot of the benefits we get from the close grip, and you're just building less chest. Okay? Because the floor press is actually a great chest builder. I've discussed that in the past as to why that is and what's going on with it. Um... I've discussed that. So I'll do floor press up next. But these went good. Notice I'm able to lock it without the bar drifting above my face against those chains. Okay, that means my triceps are catching up. Normally, what is uh, the bar drifting towards your face mean? It means your triceps are getting weak and your delts are having to take over. 
Well, in this case, my triceps, I think maybe due to the fatigue, might be stronger than my delts now for a little while due to that, that issue and probably some detraining that happened. My triceps are probably catching up. Now, my delt strength and everything is going to return real fast, isn't it? So it may go back the other way. So I have to keep pushing the triceps as a major weak point. So my su real supplemental work is going to be geared towards triceps. So I started with the floor press and I, I did some reps with 135 to feel about how strong I felt. And I realized I don't think I can, I can hit 10 with 225 today. I've got to get the, the bar path back down. I haven't done these in a little while. I haven't done these in, in over two months now, really. So they felt awkward. So I went with 205 and I managed to get four sets of 10 with this, with the wider grip. And you guys notice I can pretty much touch. So people who say, oh, it's a partial, I can touch. And I don't have short arms. Look at the range of motion there. Even with a wide grip, look how long my range of motion is. I have a, a three inch ape index actually. So I have long arms, but it's just my torso and stuff is that big. So for me, it's pretty much a full range of motion, short, maybe a half inch, depending on how big of a breath I have at the bottom. Like I can take a deep breath and touch it, but if I'm not super deep breath, it doesn't quite touch. It just barely hits my chest hair. So it's, it's pretty much a full range of motion for me, but I get all those benefits of the floor press of taking that last bit of shoulder rotation out so it's easy on the shoulders, having to explode out of the bottom, maintain that tightness. And my chest really, really felt it. Like I, I noticed my chest felt like the limiting factor here more than anything else. So what does that tell us? Well, the floor press will keep building my chest and then I'm going to do dips. So I think what I'm going to do a lot of the max effort days, uh, because I want to replace the floor press with the, or the closed grip bench with this for now. But I didn't feel like my shoulder could quite handle it this last time. Today it can. So I'm going to work with this both days and I'm going to rotate bars as necessary. I have multiple bars I can do this with that I have experience with. So we're just going to get as strong as possible as we can on rep work. I want to get up to doing five sets, but today four was all I could handle. That last set was hard. I didn't want to reduce weight. I felt like I wouldn't have been able to get 10. I'm pretty much hitting uh, technical failure and grinding on the last rep, particularly on the fourth set. So four by 10. I know it's only 205. So the goal will be at first to get back to 225. And I may not go past 225. I might get to where I can do 225 for at least 10 on all my bars and just work on reps with them. And when the reps stall, we switch bars, okay, to build a different uh, everything up. But I notice definitely when I do a lot of floor press and a lot of triceps, particularly for volume, that's when my bench has gone up. It's when I've seen good bench numbers. So that's what we need to do along with the correct speed work. The speed work is also critical. I mean, all this supplemental work builds the muscles. And so I feel like floor press and weighted dips for volume. That's going to build the pecs up. The beauty of it is they're both really good tricep exercises, right? They're both really good tricep exercises. They obviously work the front delts. But I feel like the upright rows will handle any other front delt work I need, especially at 10 sets a week. And the front delts do get worked just as heavily as pressing does with the upright row. So it, it'll be fine. It'll do what I need it to do. So this is going to be a high priority. I need to get really, really strong at floor presses on the reps. At the rep work. So the next goal, it needs to be able to get to where I can do 5x10 with 225. With any of the bars. With all the bars. And then build reps. So if I get to where I can do 12, 13, or 15, whatever. I'm just going to build reps, reps, reps. It's going to be about building volume then with the 225. With all three bars. And I think that will build all my chest up and uh, to a large extent triceps to where I need them to get my bench moving. And because I'm practicing the wider grip here and then I do close grip for the speed bench, I'm getting both. I'm getting both. And then we'll test later and see if my wider ever catches up to my close grip or passes it. And I'll have to experiment with different grip lists. They all have to experiment with them while keeping the shoulders healthy. But triceps are always going to be the priority. Because I need triceps. They've always been a weak link for me uh, for a long, long time. I'm going to have to keep building them and keep building them as a, as a very high priority. So today we did JM presses. Now I messed with a couple different grips. I haven't done these in a, in a little while either. And so trying to find the grip 
whether I wanted to do a, a bulldog grip or whatever, I've noticed a difference in my strength on these depending on the grip. So it took me a bit to get it where I want it. Plus I used my good bar and it rolls really easy because of the bearings. You guys notice it rolling on some of the reps. See the, the plates rolling because of the bearings. Man, that made it annoying at the bottom. So uh, I did six sets of 12. A couple of these I only got 10 because I was getting so fatigued. But six by 12, technically four by 12 and two by 10. But six sets uh, using a slightly lighter weight. Yes, I know I've used heavier weight, but I need to focus on keeping this form clean so that we keep everything easy on my shoulders and we force the triceps to do most of the work. It needs to be tricep dominant. The tricep needs to be the most important muscle here. And that's what we have to do, right? Because if I want my triceps to grow, we do that. But we're just using a bigger exercise, this hybrid exercise to do it. Um, and that's come up before too, you know, I'll get people who will say, I actually had someone see me doing these. They're like, I thought you said you always touch the chest on the bench press. And it's like, this isn't a bench. If I were to touch, the bar would land in my throat. This, the bar's not really technically above my chest, maybe the very top of my chest. But on these right now, I'm lowering on basically above the neck, which is why I have the safeties there. All right, they're above my neck. And notice the elbows tuck all the way right this is a tricep exercise it just happens to be a multi-joint tricep exercise so again no we're not trying to touch the chest it's not it's not for the same purpose it's a tremendous tricep builder very popular in strength circles um, and even some bodybuilding circles have picked up on it because they realize it, it is a really really good tricep exercise now i'm not necessarily going to do it on all of my days i'm going to probably mess with it on speed days and because I'm doing two different big chest presses uh, on those, because I'm going to try to mess with both floor press and dips on max day, I'll stick with the smaller exercise. I'll stick with the extensions. And then that way I'm not beating myself up continually with one. And then I'll, afterwards, later in the day, I'll do band press downs to keep my tendons healthy just for, for restoration. And then let my triceps rest the other five days you know and I've, I've messed with the methods and i even have clients who do it and a lot of guys like to do the band press sounds every day but i feel like that really only helps people who are having tendon problems more than anything i would rather my triceps get several days of rest every week i want to just get them hit as hard as possible stimulate maximum growth two days a week and then let them largely rest the other so i'll do my restoration work on the days later in the day is a second workout, little mini workouts. You know, come in and do a few sets of the high rep band press downs to failure. So what I mean high rep, like 30 reps. I, I use my little mini band and I can get at least 30 reps with it. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. That's what we're doing. Uh, but yeah, triceps, triceps, triceps. So triceps are going to get a, a direct exercise every single upper body workout. Minimum of five sets. That way they get at least 10 direct sets every week, plus the band work. The band work has an adaptative response too, right? The band work has a response also. But also keep in mind, people will look at this and not realize the speed work has an enormous hypertrophic component. So people who are like, well, you really only did four real sets for the chest. Well, no, I did 10 triples on speed bench. And the speed bench lights my pecs up. It lights my pecs up. And, and I'll be honest, I had DOMS up until yesterday. My, my chest workout from Monday had two days worth of DOMS. And they were serious because it was a little more volume than I'm used to. And I'm coming off of a deload. So, again, I've got to watch that volume just a little bit. But, I mean, that's good. To some extent, I mean, I'm at a point where I don't normally think like DOMS. But when I've got muscles that really need to come up, I'm at a point as an advanced lifter. Maybe I do need one day of DOMS on things that I'm really serious about, right? It'd be a good idea. Again, just to know that I stimulated a serious amount of adaptation. I don't like it. And it's not necessary for everyone to have that. It's not always indicative of a good workout. It's indicative that you did a ton of volume. So uh, I'm not going to dismiss it as a bad thing. Now, two days could be a bit, a bit much. I might have done a couple sets more than was ideal. And so there was a, a slight recovery issue from it. But, you know, I felt good on the speed bench today. And the DOMS was gone today. Uh, but I do feel definitely some, some tenderness and soreness today again after doing all the pressing. 
Then we did these. Well, and if you guys notice, I've changed the rack. I don't have the bolts behind my head I'm worried about hitting, so I'm trying to pull myself further up. And I struggled today with the bar kept rolling on me. No matter what I did, the bar rolled, so I had to regrip on a good chunk of these sets. And for those curious, why am I doing the narrower grip shoulder width now instead, instead of the wide grip? Mainly because I, I need to get more lat. When we do a real wide grip, it still works the lat, but the focus is the upper back. I'm doing other upper back and rear delt and trap work and everything too, every week. So we're good. This is a more balanced approach. This gets a nice balance between the lat and the whole upper back, and it's still way better than a pull-up is for it, for as far as the upper back goes. But I'm doing 20 sets a week, because I do five sets all main workouts. And I do the axle bar for the extra grip training, because the grip is the weak link on my deadlift. It's the weak link on my deadlift, so I have to keep hammering the grip. And I'm doing a narrower grip because it's more balanced. Number two, it's a longer range of motion. I have to do more work. There's more work involved in every rep. And it brings more muscles into bear due to the angles involved. So more work done, more muscle involvement. This is just better for overall hypertrophy. Build the entire middle and upper back. And 20 limit sets a week of these basically of getting very close to failure or hitting failure. It's a lot. But it's an easy to recover from exercise. So it's okay. We can get away with it. There's a lot of exercises I would not recommend you do 20 sets a week on. You can get away with it on some of these if your programming is good. Now, I actually had one of my clients ask, well, why don't we do 20 sets of dumbbell press if a chest is a weakness? I'm like, because we're maxing and doing speed work for the chest also. You're going to end up over beating those tendons up unless it's really light restoration work. Actual real work sets, it's problematic. Our lats and upper back, though, aren't used dynamically on our big lifts, right? They're worked, but it's more isometrically or as stabilizers on the squat bench and deadlift. So our maxes and our speed work on that stuff isn't hitting them the same. We don't have as big of a risk of, of overuse. So we can come in and hammer volume, hammer volume, hammer volume on these. Also, we only care about getting them thicker. We're not even as worried so much about uh, maximizing strength on them because even if they do hold on a, on a max, it tends to be for an extended period of time isometrically, right? Like we have to use that upper back to stabilize the squat all the way on the walkout and then bring it back in. So stuff like that. And I did my wide grip upright rows. Again, for those who will say this is a counterindicated exercise, not the way I do it. Wide grip. Pointer fingers are on the rings, and I'll work on getting it wider. I went up five pounds on this today. You don't see the small plates on the side. And sets of 15 were challenging today, especially the last couple sets. Like, I'm having to almost rest pause them. Okay, but five sets of 15. This works the entire shoulder girdle. Okay, but take home. How do we do this without injuring the shoulder, risking injury of the shoulder, risking impingements and things? So the wide grip and limiting the range of motion at the top. And I'm doing these very strict now, but I'm not really coming above the nipple, and I'm going ultra-wide grip. That, that wider grip, by the way, hits the posterior delt and everything harder. So again, this is a rear delt exercise, side delt exercise, front delt, upper trap, as we're hitting the middle trap really hard with all the rowing. We need to make sure the whole trap grows. That's why I'm also doing some shrugs on the lower body days. Um, again, and a lot of volume here. Why? Delts are very volume resistant. The shoulder girdle is very volume resistant. Yes, it's getting worked with the other lifts. Side delt isn't as much. And this finishes it all off. And five sets of this twice a week for very high reps. We're again hitting that whole area, bringing it up. And because I'm using much lighter weight, it's easier on the joints. That's the other thing to think about. Strict form, being careful with position and very lightweight, okay? It's easier on the joints. And by doing that, we can go ahead and stimulate the muscle. Now, people will say silly stuff like, oh, train the muscles, not the joints. That's stupidity. You need to train your joints. What you don't want to do is train the joints with a movement like this, okay? Our joints do need to be trained, but we have other movements that will help train our joints to a full range of motion, right? The whole shoulder joint's getting trained pretty well on those those uh, inverted rows, for example, right? That works that shoulder joint, and in a, in a positive way. 
this we got to be careful with. So again, be strict, be light, and just take it to muscular failure. And that, that's the thing with it. Like we're just fatiguing the muscles with large amounts of metabolic fatigue and we're hitting the volume resistant muscles. Now, people would say, do you really need side delts? Well, yeah, for benching, particularly the wider grip benching, that side delt really is a big stabilizer. It, it matters on the close grip also. But the wider you go, it's definitely a big stabilizer. So having a stronger shoulder girdle there will stabilize everything. But this works the entire shoulder structure. All the muscles of the shoulder get worked very effectively with this. That's why it's a good exercise. It's just, if done incorrectly, a potentially dangerous exercise. But it hits my shoulders hard. Um, I tend to feel a lot of fatigue in that side delt. I tend to get doms in it even. So again, very effective movement. And again, addressing one of my big weak links, that whole upper back. Upper back is a weak link for me. Triceps are a weak link for me. And when we say a weak link, I, I mean in terms of my big lifts, right? 550 box squat, 625 deficit deadlift, you know, all that stuff. Those, those things need to come up. Those muscles are limiting my ability to get another 50 pounds on those. Same with the benching, the upper back. Since it's weak on those, we know it's weak on the bench a little bit. Upper back triceps. Now, I need more pec also for wider grip. And then I finished off with axle bar curl set to 20. Um, three sets is all I could take with short breaks. I got a pump, I got a burn, I was struggling. The, the second set, I had to rest pause a little bit. And then the final set, I think around rep 12 or 13, I was so fatigued, I had to stop and rest pause doubles and then singles to get to my 20. So we pretty much reached failure and beyond there. Three sets is all I need. Now, some people would say, is three sets twice a week enough? Well, I can always add a little more later. But I'm really fatigued from all the rowing. Keeping in mind, I'm doing 20 sets of rows a week and then 10 sets of upright rows. Those are big movements that hit the biceps. So my goal here is to get that full, try to get a full range of motion, get a stretch with a supine grip. Because the supine grip isn't being worked on my biceps particularly. And it's just one angle of it that could be missed. So we want to come in and just finish that off a bit. That's it. And again, I'm just worried about building all of that to prevent a bicep tear on deadlifts. It's a protective measure. My biceps are getting a fair amount of stimulation off those rows, so you can't argue that. This is just to make sure that they get enough to grow. Just insurance. And again, trying to protect uh, that bicep tendon. And yes, you guys still see my, my, my bit of love handle and my loose skin, but I'm continuing to lose body fat slowly. We'll see where that's at with another five, six pounds of fat loss, right? Because that's where a lot of it's going to come from because that's where I store my fat. But it's clear that I'm getting leaner when we look at the front there, right? Very obviously leaner. So <laughs> we'll keep going, keep making progress. Next goal is to get down to 215. I got down to 219. Let's try to get to 215 and still get stronger. And then we'll set another goal. Maybe 210. We'll figure it out. But it was a good workout. I'm happy with it. So I hope it's been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.